I'm Lucky Luke. I am a motorcycle collector, a part collector. Started out tattooing and that's what sort of started my bankroll where I was able to start buying the bikes and buying parts and then I'd sell my bikes or parts and then just keep on making money like that. And then recently I've been doing pretty well at it so I've sort of stepped back a little bit from the tattooing just to sort of live the dream and do what I'm more passionate about these days. So yeah, I can make a living, I can pay my mortgage, pay my bills. Yeah, it's a, it's a lifestyle and it's also my job and my passion. So this is my 1971 El Camino. It's a utility vehicle. I use it for my swap meets. I call it my swap meet hack. Throw the parts in the back and draws attention to the stall, gets people coming over, gets conversations started. And then I also use it as a daily, daily runner. It's my whip. Before I bought the car, I'd never driven a V8 and I wasn't really into cars. And when I first felt that initial torque of putting my foot down on the gas pedal, like, threw me back and it felt like a Harley on four wheels and I was like, fuck, this is what I've been missing. Yeah, this is my dream car and uh, to me it's perfect. It does everything I need it to do. Finding old gold, bringing it back out into the world. I sell to all sorts of people, from like chopper guys that would buy like crazy paint gas tank for their chopper, to guys that only want mint condition stuff straight out the box. I never really chased down getting an El Camino, I always knew I liked them and a friend of mine, he was moving away and he asked me if I could help him sell the truck and I was like, damn, I like that thing. I said, I'll give you a deposit, can you give me like a month to the end of the month, I'll get the money together. I hustled the money in three days. Sold like a pan head engine, a log book, some other stuff, other parts. Sold my wife's car <laughs> and uh, the rest is history. I love driving this car, especially by myself because I can sort of get in it, put on my own music, which my wife hates, loud as I want just drive around any, any speed I want and uh, just get away from everything. Maybe just think or not think, which is good for me because my brain is constantly D -d 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 -d. I've got ADD, so I'm like tunnel vision and oh, the driving helps my ADD because yeah, if I feel a bit pent up, I can just put my foot down and go and I'm just like, ah, it's like a release for me. Now I've got a kid on the way. Actually, I preempted the uh, dad car and we bought a RAV4 when I sold one of my bikes. It's half e-technology and half petrol, gas. I like that the e-technology sort of is saving the planet and I get it, but there's also like less soul or character in like an electric vehicle. All my Harleys, they have a little different starting techniques and you got to prime them so many times and one will start on the first kick, one might take 10 kicks. I don't know, for me, they feel like they are actually like alive once they're started. They feel like a, a sort of like a living creature and sort of part of my family. And for me, I get just as much enjoyment working on a bike, looking at a bike as I do as riding a bike. So I really hope that custom car culture will survive this shift because I mean, I want to leave my, my possessions and my cars, my vehicles to my kids, something they can use and enjoy. So. Who knows, I can't predict the future.